Hi, I'm Pete Sumrall. In today's teaching, we have an exciting in-depth study of the Book of Romans by my father, Dr. Lester Sumrall. So join me and let the Word of God strengthen our faith in our lives. As Paul addressed the Roman Christians, his goal was to share the message of Christ, the plan of salvation, and to instruct the church and new converts concerning their Christian duties. The truths are timeless. The Book of Romans contains knowledge that can strengthen your life today. Dr. Lester Sumrall shares his insight in this in-depth Bible study on Romans, the epistle. Uh, justification by faith is possibly the most important point that Paul is trying to put across. He's trying to show Judaism that they are not saved and converted because of circumcision, but that the Gentiles are just as saved with uncircumcision. And it was a, huh, you talk about problems, you should have had Democrats and Republicans back then. They could have had a real foray. But uh, he, he is trying to teach them here that justification is just as if you had never sinned, and the blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior, cleanses us from total sin. Are you glad for that? Paul is very careful that this truth does not take second place. It could not take second place because it is first place. We have to know how we are saved and how glad we are that we have come to know that. It was through Adam's disobedience that brought man into an area of condemnation uh, through his own rebellion against God. And it took the blessing uh, from heaven, from God, brought to us by the Lord Jesus Christ with his obedience that we have become justified and restored uh, to God. And this, this, <coughs> this is lesson number 14. And we have finally gotten to chapter 5. We're working on it real hard. And our total lesson today is found beginning in verse 1 of Romans 5 and uh, continuing through verse 5. And we're going to talk about seven results that comes into your life because you are justified by faith. In Romans 5 and 1, it says, therefore, be justified by faith. He says, therefore, because he's been pleading the cause now for a long time in the previous chapters. So he gets to this point and says, now, therefore, he wants you to believe all that he has said in chapters 4, 3, 2, and 1. And he says, therefore, now, we are justified by faith, and we have peace with God. Say peace. peace. We have peace with God, and it is all through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access. Say access. We have access by faith into this grace. Say grace. Where, wherein we stand. Say stand. stand. I'm giving you the points of the lesson here. Wherein we stand. And we rejoice in hope. Say rejoice. rejoice. And, and so we rejoice in, in hope of the glory of God, which is our salvation. And, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the law of God is shed, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. The, gof the gospel of Jesus is so simple. It's only man that makes it difficult. Any child can read this and know what justification is, and the fruit of justification, which we demand in your life. Now, that, that's what we're getting at today. We don't want you to, to be justified and not have the fruits of justification. We want you to know that you know and be sure that you're sure and to have all the blessings that belong with being saved. <laughs> don't be like the little boy looking at an old mule and looks at him and he says, you know, I know you got religion, says you look just like my daddy. <laughs> we, we want you to be justified and to have a a sweet countenance about it and a joyful countenance and the anointing of God. Can you say amen? amen? And that's what God wants you to have. Number one, what does justification do for us? When we are born again and, and that we do not receive it through works, 
not because we're good. We receive it by the mercies of God. What does it produce in our lives? Number one, it produces peace in our lives. We live in a troubled world. The world has always been troubled. It hadn't just got troubled. Why do you think Eve felt when Cain killed Abel? And, and they didn't know even what to do with a corpse. They didn't have any undertakers around. And, and here she had a stinking body and about 12 hours on her hand. And she didn't even know that if you cease to breathe, that you begin to stink. I think they had a lot of problems in that home. What would you say? No wonder old Cain ran for his life and began to say everybody was going to kill him. You know, because he, he saw himself as he truly was. And God spoke to him and, and, and said uh, that the sin crouches at the door. And that's what that word means, crouches at the door. A lion was there at the door to destroy him. And God was offering him forgiveness even for that terrible day. But there's always been a lack of peace in the world. Uh, 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 and no one here has ever lived in a time when there was true peace upon the face of this earth. Because peace is an inner thing. You cannot have peace in a community without having peace in people's hearts. We want peace in the world, but nobody wants to live right. You know? We don't want AIDS at all, but we just love homosexuals. We're slightly stupid. Uh, we want to love little babies, but we'd like to kill 1,500,000 every year, abort them, and destroy them. And you might be killing presidents. Uh, you, might be, you might be killing governors. You might be killing the greatest evangelists and pastors the world ever, ever knew. And you've got no business taking life. The first thing that justification does is bring tranquility. Romans 14, 17 says the kingdom of God is righteousness. Peace. Say peace. peace. If you don't have peace, you haven't been to Calvary long enough. You better go back and get another dip because Calvary brings peace. If you've got a troubled heart, there's something there besides Calvary because Jesus Christ came to bear away our sorrows and our problems and our heartaches and to plant within us peace that passeth understanding. That's your brain up there. Trouble goes out of a heart. Uh, trouble goes out of anyone's person, uh, his total person, when the Lord Jesus Christ comes in. Sorrows leave a man. Uh, and and uh, harmony and joy comes into that person's life when Jesus comes in. If you know it, say amen. amen. Tumult. Tumult has no place in the life of a person whose sins are forgiven. It just doesn't have any place there. Noise and confusion quiet down for the person who is justified by faith. Peace begins to move in. By faith, we're no longer at war. We're not at war with God. We're not at war with our fellow man. We're not at war with ourselves. We, we have at that moment peace. That's what justification does. You come to the Lord Jesus Christ today and bear your soul and say, forgive me of my sins. Uh, then you become justified, just as if you had never sinned. And at that point, you get peace. How many found that peace? You see your hand? You found it? Wave it a little bit. Hey, isn't that great? Yes, I found it too. That's great. Number two, justification gives access. Now, we, have, we got 17 big double doors in this auditorium here. When we say scat, man, you got 17 ways to get out of here. Some sinners need about that much, too. But anyway, uh, when you are justified, you have a door. You have an access, you know. You, you, you have an opening that you can get through. And that opening is into the grace of God. That's, that, that's in verse 2. Justification is our entrance into the mighty, inexhaustible storehouse. Ooh, I feel something moving in me. How about you? I feel like some of you have been eating crumbs, and you should have been at a banquet. you like the poor Irishman that got a, that got a, I think it might have been my great-great-uncle or something. Anyway, uh, he got a ticket across to America, and, and he didn't know they served food free on the boat, and so he brought some sardines and crackers with him. And he would look in the dining room and say, my, it must be wonderful to sit in there. I wish I could sit in there. And the day before they got to New York, he says, I'll be so glad to get to New York and get some food 
says, my crackers and sardines are running out. And the other pastor says, you mean, you, you mean that you haven't been eating in the dining room? Well, he said, I don't have any money for that. They said, that all comes along with it. It would take an Irishman to miss a thing like that, you know. <laughs> and, and some of you, there's so many things that come along with being saved. There's so much glory. There's so much anointing. <laughs> well, hallelujah. Ah, so much change. You reach into the great storehouses of the Almighty, and you receive that which no other can receive. Sinners don't know anything about it at all. We have access. It is a door into the mercies of God. It is a window into the bounty, into the great bounties of the delicacies of our God, and they have been prepared for us. It establishes us with a right relationship, with a key and a combination to get in there we have an access into grace. Now, that's what justification is all about. How many are going to get in and get more out of it? Yes, sir. We're going to get more out of it in Jesus' name. Number three, a justification uh, produces a strength. That's still in verse 2. Justification gives us access to God, sure, in a way that we were unable to ever stand before him before. And we now stand before him without trembling, without fear, without wavering, without shaking, because we are now the son and the daughter of God, and we don't have to be afraid of God. And then through faith, we, we stand before God and with sure footings on solid ground that justification produces strength to stand. When you're born again, you're not like a wave on a sea anymore. When you're, when you're born again, you're not like ground. It keeps going up and keeps going down. All this business of people sliding back and sliding up and sliding back, you just need to come to Calvary for a real good anointing there and a real good reception of Jesus Christ into your heart, and there won't be this going back and forth. And, and, and when there is going back and forth, normally it's because of the wrong associates that you've been messing around with putting fear and doubt into your heart. When I got saved, I changed friendships. Well, they changed me. They didn't come around anymore. You see. And, and if you don't change friendships, you're going to change back to what you were. You've got to find people that know on what you know and believe what you believe and stand for what you stand for, or you lose what you have. You know, you, 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 you live with the dogs and you get fleas. And, and you just <laughs> got to live with the people of God and have this right kind of anointing upon our lives. Justification produced strength. You, you see it in Peter. Poor Peter was a waver, you know, he was this and he was that and the other. But once the power of God came on his life, regenerated by the blood of Jesus, received the Holy Ghost into his life, he was called a stone and not a pebble anymore. He, he's not, he wasn't a rolling stone. Uh, he, he was an anchored stone. And how glad we are that you and I can receive strength through our being born again, through our being born again. Now, now, church members have a hard time with this because many of them are not born again. They don't know anything about being born again. They just join the church because of the commiseration of something. They, 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 they want something, and they don't know what they want, so they just join up with something. You could join the Lions Club if you want to be like a lion, of course. Uh, but that would make you born again. You have to come to the Lord Jesus Christ personally. Say personally. Not as a family. The family has to come one by one. God is nobody's uncle. Yeah. You, you, you're not in on, on family relationships. You're in the kingdom of God because you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you are personally justified. Say, I am justified. Let the devil hear it. He's hard of hearing, so we say it loud. Justification births rejoicing. I, I, I like that because we live in a world today where some people, I believe they're justified, I believe they're born again, but they're not, they have not entered into the rejoicing area of it. Rejoicing makes you feel younger. How many would like to feel a little younger? I thought you would. You start rejoicing and you will. You will. I heard of a man who walked out of a church on a Sunday morning 
and he had his little son along with him, and, and as he walked out, he said, whew, that's over for a week. And the little boy said, make it a month. You know, they hadn't enjoyed anything in there. Little boy hadn't gotten on to anything in there. So he said, why, why get tormented every Sunday? Do it once a month. <laughs> we don't have any religion like that. We have religion of happiness. Say happiness. We're happy inside. The devil and his bunch are not happy. They can say he, he, he for Hollywood, but they can't say hallelujah, praise the Lord. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have that way down blessing. How many have the way down blessing? Ah, that's the kind God wants to bring into our hearts. Man was created to be a creature of rejoicing. Created that way. God made him that way. If we do not have rejoicing in our hearts, we will miss the best thing God has for us. God created us, recreated us for, for rejoicing in him. David entered into that in a most spectacular way. Did you know the 23rd Psalm was first sung to sheep? You say, why? He didn't have anybody else to sing to. You have to sing with what you got. And he'd look at those sheep and yell as loud as he could, Jehovah is my shepherd! And all the sheep would stomp their feet. Well, anyway, <laughs> I'm sure they got the feeling. They got, they got the feeling there. He was a rejoicing person. He had entered into something in God, you see, that made him a rejoicing person. And our total church in our country today needs to learn there are many sinners that would get saved if the church ever rejoiced. Yeah. But, well, they look at the miserable saints. They say, well, our misery and their misery is most miserable. And but says, what we'd like to do is to get rid of our misery and not take on theirs. And it's time to get rid of misery. I'm a happy man. How about you? Because of justification. Because of justification. So justification birthed rejoicing. It gives, it gives birth to it. God's love, when we feel his love, brings great joy into our hearts. And the peace, the access that we have into grace, and the strength that he gives in our inner person, that God's presence all work together with all these, and it produces within us a spirit of rejoicing, a spirit of rejoicing. Now, this is what justification is all about. It is not related to direct church membership. In every church, there may be good people and there may be bad people, but we are not relating this thing to churchianity. We are relating it to your personal experience of justification just as if you had never sinned. Hey, wouldn't that be nice? Amen. Wouldn't that be nice? Well, it is nice. God covers it. He forgives it. He forgets it. And throws it in the sea of forgetfulness and tells the devil, don't throw a fishing in there. You just can't do that. It's all gone. Say all gone. Now, you got to know that. You got to look in the mirror every morning and say that. My sorrow's all gone. <laughs> yeah. You have to wait to comb your hair. But anyway, and number five, uh, justification causes us to glory in tribulation. Uh, you say, why could a glo how could a person glory in tribulation? Knowing what's just on the other side. You know, you know, Jesus gloried in the cross because three days later, <laughs> he was going to be king of kings and lord of lords. All power in heaven and earth was going to be delivered unto him three days later. So he said, I, I, I glory in this bit of tribulation. You can give me that tree if you want to. I'll turn the thing into a throne and there judge the hearts of man for the next 2,000 years. And, and so you have to look at tribulation right. And, and uh, you must never let tribulation get on top. It belongs on the bottom. You're supposed to walk on it. And, and some of you have your tribulation, you, you, you've, you've tribulated too much. And, and, and you got it in the wrong place. You got it in your head. You, you, you got it on your tongue. And you need to put it on your feet and, 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 and tromp it down and, and say, I want, 
nothing that is now will be this way in a few minutes. I'm going to change the whole thing. And everything that's happening now is going to cease to happen real quick. And I'm going to start something else happening. And you, you walk through victory. You say, well, why is there tribulation? Because the devil don't like you. And he doesn't like your Savior. Now, if you're on his side, but they still have tribulation on his side. The most miserable people in the world are sinners, and the devil never did lift a burden from one of them. He's a mean devil. He don't even carry around aspirin tablets. He just lets you go ahead and suffer, you know. But God is a healer. Say healer. He heals the heart. He heals the mind. Uh, he heals the soul. He heals the spirit. God is a healer. Say healer. He will take away, and he will, he will cause to come to naught those negative things, and your life will become rich in him. Now, and I've had a, over 50 years of this blessing, and I know that it's true. Number six, uh, justification yields patience. Patience is a God-given quality. Uh, it is a key to coping with life. If you say it too quick, it might be wrong. It's better to say it slowly. Patience, because of God's patience with us, we learn patience toward others. And you should put a little circle there, really. Because of God's patience, we should be patient. Because God is patient with you, you should be patient with the other members of your family. Yeah, about three of you. That's all right. You should be patient with the people that you work with because God has patience. And so we should emulate God. Because of his rich and wonderful patience with us, we should learn some patience toward those around us. Our patience produces experience. Yeah, you better believe it. How many think you've already had too much experience? No, no, no. Paul was not ashamed of the gospel because in its, in it, in its patient preaching, uh, he had experienced hope for the whole human race. For the whole human race, he had hope. Experience gives birth to knowledge so that we know and that we are, that we understand life. And so if we didn't go through these things, we wouldn't have an interpretation of what life is really all about. Number seven, hope is a product of justification. Hope tells us that we can overcome on earth because we will soon be in heaven. That's the story of hope. That if you're faithful here, there's faithfulness over there that's going to greet you on the other side. Hope does not make us ashamed. We're not ashamed of the things that happen to us. I, I see the great men of God being abused today. Well, they've always been abused. John Wesley was more abused than any preacher living at this moment right now. All kinds of even rotten materials were thrown at him, old vegetables and overripe things that were thrown, uh, thrown at him. I, I mean, uh, and he was cursed to his face. And, and so uh, th there was more abuse in that day than there is, than, than there is today. But hope comes to us, and we know and we know that we will not be ashamed that we're going to hold what we have. What we have is right. What we have is true, and we're not going to give it up, and so we have hope within us, and all the people said, and we, and we believe uh, that for the whole, for the whole of the, for the whole of human race. Paul says in, in, the, in Romans chapter 1, verse 17, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're not ashamed to be Christians today. They're the best people in the world. They're the most productive people in the world. They're the most loving people in the world. They're the most gentle people in the world. God, God loves his people. Can you say amen? amen? We must not be ashamed because we have great hope of a glorious of all the great promises of God. The Holy Ghost is the agent who anchors heaven's hope in our heart. Heaven's hope. You know, a lot of this world today is really hopeless <laughs> as far as they're concerned. But with us, there's nothing hopeless. There's nothing hopeless. We, we, we believe in hope. We, we are livers of hope. We are the trustees of hope. We, we have hope within us to, for a better society, for a better world out there. And if the Lord has to chastise this world, he's going to leap us over into that other world where he, where he has cleansed and, and, and made a beautiful place for us to come. And we shall live with him over there forever and ever. Hey, this is all because you got saved. I mean, I'm glad you made it. Yeah, all these blessings belong to you because you found Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You are now what you 
used to not be. And you now possess what you did not used to have. And you are now blessed, and you are now uh, strengthened by the Most High God because you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. How many glad you did it? Yeah. So let's thank you. So let's, let's walk in justification. And I, I think you have to keep saying it. I think you have to keep saying it. Uh, I, I was healed of tuberculosis when I was 17 years old. I keep talking about it right now. You say, why? I don't want tuberculosis anymore. And any other ulcers. I don't want any of it. <laughs> I've had wonderful health for over 50 years, and I just want to keep it that way. Well, C Broadcasting is privileged to bring you these life-changing messages by Dr. Lester Sumrall. If you found today's teaching valuable, please consider supporting one or more of these programs and have your name added as a closed caption sponsor. Call the number on the screen to find out more. I'm Pete Sumrall. Thanks for watching.